Hey, so I'm back. Haven't done a video now since May, I believe it is. Um, and I thought I would just do kind of a video and kind of let you guys know that I'm still here for those interested. Fish room's still going. Um, kind of give you guys a little bit of an explanation on where I've been and why I haven't been uploading videos, that type of thing. So, <clears throat> 2020, as everybody knows, has sucked. But for me, it's been uh, worse than a lot of people. A lot of people probably had it worse than me too, but um, so just to kind of take you through. Um, so earlier this year before COVID hit, um, my uh, mom had gone into a nursing home. She had been battling dementia for, well, at that time, about three years. And uh, then right before COVID hit, um, there was some bad things that happened there um, with the staff and we pulled her out. Um, really, to be honest with you at that point, that was a uh, godsend to be honest with you because then COVID hit and if she would have been still in that nursing home, she would have been in there alone for many, many months until, well, it was end of July in Minnesota here where I'm at, where they started allowing um, essential caregivers, <clears throat> family members um, to do visits at the nursing homes. So that would have been basically six months of her being alone in, in a nursing home. Anyway, she was at home again with my dad um, for throughout the whole March, or well, February, March, April, May, June, July, end of July, finally, when they lifted the restrictions, we found a new nursing home, a real, real great, real great place and we got her in there. And, um, but you know, throughout the summer, um, even though she was able to be at home with my dad, you know, she slowly got worse and worse and it's, it, it was really hard. And, you know, I had to help out a lot. Uh, I'm not saying that I took care of her on my own, not, not by any means. My dad, I mean, bless the guy, he was just awesome. Um, and uh, he took care of my mom and uh, me and my brother, we helped out as much as we could, spent a lot of time over at their house and things like that. And with all the stress of COVID, my job got way worse during COVID, it got busier um, and everything else, um, the hobby, uh, and and uploading videos just uh, took a took a back seat. Um, anyway, so July through the beginning of October, my mom was in a nursing home, and then she eventually passed away. It's about, been about three weeks now since she's been gone, and it's it's pretty sad. But I thought, um, you know, I've now a little time has freed up. Um, not that that's a a good, I don't know how to describe it, but my time has freed up now that she's gone. Um, and so I've started taking care of the fish room a little bit more and just kind of enjoying the hobby a little bit. And I thought, well, let's upload a video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get back to uploading regular videos or not. Um, you know, YouTube over this, this, this past year has started to be kind of a turn off for me, to be honest with you. I don't watch as many channels as I used to. Um, you know, when I started my YouTube channel, I don't know how long ago it was now, I want to say eight, nine, maybe 10 years. What it was at that point in the fish community, at least, was just a place where you would meet other hobbyists and you would just kind of show and talk about your aquariums and your fish. And then you would comment on other people's channels and you just, you kind of got to know people, became friends on YouTube, that type of thing. And, um, that's what it was. It wasn't so much to see how much you could grow, how much you could make money wise off of your channel. Um, if you could become basically a YouTube celebrity, which that's fine. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I would love to be able to say that I c could do that and make a career out of it. I mean, there's people that are making tons of money and don't have a real job because of their YouTube channel. And that's awesome. Um, but I don't have the time to put in the work for that. And, um, you know, it's just like anything um, when people get famous. You know, there's a lot of luck 
you know, luck and opportunity um, create greatness. I think the saying is that type of thing. And not everyone gets the opportunity. It's just how it is. It's how life goes. Things things aren't always fair, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm, I'm going off into a rant. It, but basically what I'm trying to say is I don't know if I'm going to start trying to do videos as regularly as I used to. I don't think I'll get off of the... Uh, YouTube platform completely, but what I'm gonna do in this video though um, is just update all my tanks so that I can get one update video out there and just kinda let you guys know. Some people follow me for my cichlids, which you're seeing behind me. Some people follow me for my shrimps. Some people follow me for my saltwater tanks and I'm just gonna do them all and uh, get one video out there and then we'll go from there and see what I decide to do going forward. So, that being said, Still running aquatic support systems. Things have been going good. Um, with that, actually during the pandemic, sales are way up from last year, um, probably because a lot of people are you know, staying inside and, and getting into the aquarium hobby. So they're buying fish food, they're buying shrimp food, they're buying shrimp products, um, things like that. Um, so um, the website's still there, aquaticsupportsystems.com. Um, you cichlid keepers, you know um, that I sell Southern Delight fish food. It's one of the best fish foods out there, especially for cichlids. You shrimp keepers, you know that I sell Shrimp King pot products, Glass Garden, the full line of Glass Garden, full line of Salty Shrimp, um, some MK Breed, um, some other things like that. So, uh, you know, check it out. Um, AquaticSupportSystems.com. And then I'm also on, uh, you know, I sell everything on eBay and Amazon as well. So um, you can feel free to buy it through there um, or, or the website, which, whichever you choose. Um, one new thing I'm going to show you guys once I start the video is, is a product that I've been carrying called Green Pleco. Um, they're plush toys with suction cups so you can stick them on your aquarium, stick them on a window and that. Those things have really been selling awesome. I've been selling them now for about a year um, and they're one of my top selling products, uh, to be honest with you. So I'll, I'll give you a look at those when we're doing the fish tour, but I have to turn the camera around first and um, with these iPhones. Well, let's see, it's been so long since I shot a video. Yeah, you can't turn it around once you start recording. So I'm gonna press pause here and we'll get the tour started. All right, so what I was just talking about were these plush toys. Um, they're made by a company called Green Pleco and they started by doing Plecos. Um, I'll pull a couple off. Here's, uh, I believe this one's called the Sunshine. There's a suction cup. If I if I talked about these before in a video, I'm sorry, but um, there's all different colors uh, with the Plecos. There's a Royal. There's these red ones, which they don't make red or there's no red Plecos in nature, but they're just really fun. Um, these are the goldfish down here. Pretty awesome. Um, there's also, uh, for your shrimp keepers, uh, there's these, uh, they're falling on me. There's these shrimp, little shrimp here, crystal reds. These awesome looking bettas. There's a blue and red one, and then there's a red, fully red one. There's some Corridoras, Sturby, and I forget the other type. There's two different kinds. There's clown loaches. Uh, here's a bag of uh, rainbow sharks, and then there's red tail sharks. Um, so all sorts of, these blue ones and green ones up here actually glow in the dark. Oh, and then frontosas. There's not a ton of fish, it's mostly placos and stuff, but hopefully they'll come out with some more fish. Here's a frontosa, those are sweet. These are the, some more placos down here. Anyway, enough about that. If you're looking for these, uh, go to my website, AquaticSupportSystems.com, um, or else uh, my Amazon store or my eBay store. All right, let's start. Uh, here's uh, one of the Midas. This one is Cheeto's brother, who I've never really named. He's grown quite a bit bigger than Cheeto. He's been really picking on this female here in the last few days, so I'm going to have to divide them. But uh, he's still looking real good. Um, down below here is the Trimac pair who have bred and um, we've, uh, we've gotten wiggler. No, we've gotten free swimmers, but they just never lasted. There's a female back there. Um, he's getting pretty randy lately and he's been nipping at her quite a bit. So she's kind of hiding back there, but he's looking good. 
I'll show you my other Trimac uh, later in the video. Um, he's looking even better. Um, over here is the reddest, latest male. The female is in this tube over here right now. I can't see, you can see her tail. Or no, yeah, that's her tail. I was thinking that might be the pleco. This guy's still been looking really awesome. They haven't, they haven't bred at all in well over a year now, maybe two. But still doing good and really enjoy them. Up above here is Cheeto's tank. Sorry about the glare. There's Cheeto. He's getting a little old. Um, I mean, his brother is just as old, um, but uh, he's looking a little bit worse for the wear. Um, he's not as active as he once was. This female in here, though, is super active. And then these silver dollars in here are getting pretty big, these red hooks, but here's Cheeto. Still probably my most asks, asked about fish. So those guys are in, a, that's a pair of 180s and then this is a 180 with a 125. A 300 gallon has uh, my Umbi pair. This is um, Optimus and Matrix, which they've taken over this tank now because those of you that follow me, um, you may remember Magnus and Beast, which this is a picture of Magnus on the Aquatic Support Systems banner. Um, that was the uh, wild caught pair that I inherited from Mike Mann way back now, a few years ago. And then this guy is their offspring. Magnus and Beast have both passed on, unfortunately. But, you know, they were old. Stuff happened. And uh, over this past summer, um, both of them passed away at different times, but um, oh, you can see they, they do have some fry in here now. They kind of hide in these rocks, but they had just come out before. I don't know if you can see some of them. There's like 20 of them down there. They had a small spawn here recently. Not trying to grow them out and sell them or anything like that at this point. You know, that's another thing. I, I don't know. If I'll ever ship fish again or not, I may, but I'm just not interested in it at this point. The return on investment and time and everything and pain in the butt to do it is just not really worth it, in my opinion, anymore. I could change my mind on that, though. Haven't been shipping shrimp either um, since the pandemic. Really haven't been selling much of anything livestock-wise, just all dry goods. Plants, that type of thing. Haven't been selling any of it locally or nationwide these are the Midas grow outs that have grown a ton probably since my last video that I did been in, back in May they're all still alive none of them have uh, died to due to aggression or anything like that and there's still six or seven clown loaches in here and then there's a uh, jewel cichlid pair red jewel cichlid pair that I put in there and they're doing just fine with the Midas. There's a little teeny female right there, and then the male. But these guys are doing great. Um, why don't I go ahead and feed them? And you can see kind of a feeding frenzy here. Um, what I feed these guys at their size right now is the Southern Delight Power Feed. Awesome, awesome food. They're just gonna go nuts here. Probably start splashing, but we'll see. Thing I like about Southern Delight too that no other fish food has is the shaker bottle, so you're not getting a bunch of fish food in your hands. The smell of it, and you know, Southern Delight's probably one of the better smelling foods, but some of those fish foods, some of those top brands out there, they really reek and they really, they really cloudy up your water too. Um, which is another thing I like about Southern Delight that it doesn't cloudy up your water. You know, they've got the probiotics in it, which is their, they're the, they, they've been doing the probiotics long before some of the other newer companies have caught on the bandwagon in the last couple years. But uh, anyway, this is a 210 gallon stack, two of them. These are old oceanic tanks. And when I say tanks, I mean that they're a heavy, heavy tank, like a military tank, not just a fish tank, if that makes sense. Down below here, I've got some Amphilophus labiatus or red devils that I'm growing out. I'm just gonna take a seat here. 
when I start walking around feeding these guys, they start running and hiding in the tubes a lot of times. So I'm gonna feed them a little bit and try to get them to come out. Um, they're, they're big enough now where they can get the power feed. I had been feeding on the uh, Southern Delight small cichlid though for quite some time. And I just recently switched over. This is small cichlid, awesome for the tons of protein. We'll go ahead and get them to come out. We'll back up a little and see if we can't get them to come out. These, most of them are more of a, a barred red devil, I guess you'd say, or, um, you know, they're still kind of grayish in color. There's a few that appeal to a light, light orange, but um, I got these off of James Randall a while back, earlier this year, and uh, that's kind of the situation with them. There's one that just came out of the tube down there. Um, I'm hoping that they'll peel and be orange, but I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's been quite a few of them that um, that um, he's had or that other people have had that stayed kind of more of the barred labiatus. Um, I think even one of the parents, if I'm not mistaken, is, is more of a barred versus an orange red devil. There's one that's peeled, kind of a light gray with, or, I mean, light orange with black more over there. I don't know, there's 15 to 20 of them in here all together. As you can see they're starting to go a little crazy now that they're realizing that there's food in there. They're fun. I'm just going to keep growing them out and see see what happens, see what they end up being like. I've, I've really been into Amphilophus species uh, over the past Year, so I guess really any of the big cichlids in my fish room except for the umbies right now are amphilophus. Uh, well, I got, no, I got some other stuff I'll show you in a minute, but the majority. So hopefully we get some stunners out of these guys at some point, that'd be cool. Um, down below here, over here, I've got uh, just a convict pair that I ended up picking up earlier this year at one of the last um, local fish club meetings we had. You know, someone in the bat program had them and I just picked them up for a couple of bucks. And as you can see, there's a bunch of fry convicts usually breed like crazy. That's the male and the female, I don't see her right now, but I don't know, I just thought it'd be something different to have some convicts. And I thought it'd be really cool if I could get them to spawn and grow up and just have a big, have a 75 gallon tank filled with convicts and that'd be cool so we'll see what happens um these are two empty tanks well two empty tanks here two newer shrimp tanks that i've been they're probably cycled by now but i haven't put anything in them although there is uh, somehow a hitchhiker made it either with the filter or with the plants and there's a blue bolt back there and he's been living ever since the tank was set up which is weird because when the you know, it made it through the cycle. And then up above here is my other Trimac. This guy's looking really good. Really like this guy. Um, let's see if I can get a better side view of him. This tank's pretty dirty and also pretty scratched up, so I apologize for that. But this guy's this guy's turned out nice. I, I like him. I like the colors on him and. He's pretty feisty usually too. Um, I can't, I was gonna feed him a couple pellets, but I can't do the lid on this one and feed him at the same time because it's, it's up too high. But anyway, so that's the main part of the fish room right here. And then we'll go over here, show you a couple shrimp tanks. This is a blue bolt tank, a red pinto tank. Usually I put some shrimp food in so that they all kind of congregate. I guess I haven't done that this time, so I'm sorry. These are some uh, Blue Dreams. Um, some, uh, this is kind of a cool story. These are, they're not super high grade, but these are um, red, um, fancy red tigers, sorry, blanking out. And they've actually had some babies, as you can see down there. But what I did when I set up this tank, I had, um, 
taken down. This was a neo tank. Um, for those of you that don't know anything about shrimp, there's neo caridina and caridina, two species of shrimp. Blah blah blah. Anyway, um, so I had set this up as a caridina tank. They need different water parameters, so I had to set it up differently. And I just put two uh, of these um, fan fancy red tigers in there, and um, just the two low grade ones in case they died. I just because I wanted to make sure it had been cycled properly. And they ended up being a male and female. They bred and they had babies. So I pulled out the adults and just left the babies in here. And they've grown up now to be adults over the past several months. And they've continued to breed. And uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, these are just some red cherries. And they don't, they're actually fire reds, but they don't look real good because they're on white substrate. Uh, over here, we've got the... Um, Oh boy, see this is how much I'm not concentrating on the hobby these days. Um, I am blanking out on what these are called again. The, I've got the black. Uh, Galaxy fish bones. <clears throat> I've got some blacks and some whites in here. Most of them are hiding right now, but there are a couple out. Let's see if I can find that. Ooh, we got some babies too. You zoom in on the camera and you see things that you don't even see with your eyes. So that's good. There's one up on the chala wood here. So, some other babies over here. Which, that's cool. I can say that I've bred these guys now. Anyway. Um. These are some different white variants that I've kind of bred over the years. These are some um, well some pintos are in here, some low grade pintos, but they're um, I'm blanking out again what you call them when you take a tiger and you take a um, crystal shrimp and breed them to on the way to get the, the four pintos they're called um not taiwan bees but um i don't remember now anyway whatever there's a ton of them in here crystal blacks over here they're doing okay uh, a lot of the colony actually did die off over the past few months and then I've got some Bloody Marys in here and this tank is in terrible condition. So you're not gonna see many, but there are a bunch and they're hiding all over. All right, we'll walk over here. The 9.9 Kampfa uh, .9 flower horn is still doing good. Although right now he does have a little bit of a injury on his nuchal hump. Hit his head on the top, I think, but um, he's still doing good. His colors aren't as good as usual right now. Boy, that light from the tank behind me is looking bad. Let's see if I can't get them from over here. Side view. Yeah, so you can see he's got that flesh wound on his nuchal hump right now, but he's had that before happen and it's always healed and cleared up nicely. And then I put a few African cichlids from my tank upstairs into here that I didn't want. The, were just washed out blue in color and weren't weren't good in that tank and I put them in here in the color they got a lot bluer whatever down here is the Hadiensis growouts starting to get some nice looking ones here I've got probably I don't know eight or ten of them in here grab some fish food and see if we can't get these guys to come out I'll grab some more of that uh, southern delight small cichlid and I'll just excuse me while I do that. Just sprinkle some in, and hopefully we'll get them to come out. There's one of them. There's a couple more. So these were some fry that I pulled before my uh, male died. My awesome male that I just missed. And. Uh, Luckily I had some fries, so I'm just growing these out to see what I get, and eventually maybe I'll have another pair again. Um, but 
yeah, they're kind of skittish now. I've been doing a lot of work down here all day today, uh, cleaning out this basement and stuff. So I've been, th this isn't, this tank isn't kind of a main walkway. And so I've been walking and put, setting stuff in front of it. So they've been kind of skittish and hiding out. But anyway, still got this Rio Blanco Moda. Be looking to move him on. Don't need him anymore. And then uh, the other flower horn up here, probably be moving this fish on at some point too. Um, don't really have much use for this one anymore either, but uh, he's still pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, some more shrimp, this is a crystal red tank. Always bred well. This is a um, black pinto tank. These are the main um, fancy red tigers um, that I was talking about before that I pulled to output in that new tank. <coughs> Excuse me. And these are my PRLs. A little baby one in there. A couple of them. It's always fun to see. Um, so let's go upstairs and I'll show you the tanks up there and then we'll, uh, we'll end this video, I guess. How about we look at the salt water here? Um, we'll start with the, uh, the newer of the two tanks. Let me put on a filter so it looks a little better with the blues. Let's see. car going on here um, so yeah here is the Red Sea um, what is this called the E 260 max been relatively happy with this the only thing that the only complaint I have with these Red Sea tanks are the filtrate the style of filtration system and I forget what they call it I don't know if this is what you would call a Herbie style but they've got that the pipes in the rear chamber here. I'm not gonna open it up, but anyway. So when the water levels fluctuate, you get a lot of um, water bubbling sound and that type of thing, and you have to make adjustments a lot. Whereas the other style of sump where I've got the overflows um, that are actually inside of the tank, uh, don't do that. But anyway, that's otherwise this tank has been awesome. I love it. It's a sexy looking tank, rimless. Um, just couldn't ask for more. I've been nothing but happy with this. Um, so we'll just kind of go through. Um, got a, a trio of, I always forget the name of these clownfish, but they're bred locally here at Augsburg College. And then they uh, our local fish store, New Wave Aquarium, sells them and all the proceeds go back to the breeding program there. Got the purple tang in here, a couple of royal grammas. Uh, the, uh, what do you call that guy that just swam away, Josh? Um, I forget now. Go through and look at some of the corals. Candy cane there. Um, trumpet, um, some zoas down there. Got uh, some of those uh, rock, rock nems. Um, this is a uh, frog spawn that's doing okay. Another frog spawn, some pallies. I got five or six NAMs total in here because some of them have split. See one back there. Got that mushroom toadstool, leather toadstool, I should say. Um, the Duncan, another either frog spawn or hammer there. Some more of the NEMS, this awesome torch here that's just really been doing good. And then another smaller torch that I had more recently purchased up there. Kind of want to get three, three or four more, well, probably two or three more torches in this little area total and just have kind of a torch island. And then some Zoas and some Green Star Polyps. You know, Zoas for me, for whatever reason, are pretty hard, although I do have some growth here, but um, I, I just never had real good luck growing them. But at any rate, that's that tank. Um, overall pretty good. And then the 125s over here. 
haven't added a ton as far as corals go. I've had some die off. I have added some fish over the summer, which the main one that I'm just super proud of and really love is this uh, powder blue tang. Um, still got the, uh, the hippo tang and the sail fin and the old beat up Scopius, I believe it is. And then uh, a magnificent fox face I added maybe since I did the last video, I'm not sure. I got a real small naso tang back there. Uh, what else? Um, I moved. I moved the. So I had this uh, the clownfish trio over in the other tank. Um, the, the big female is the only one that's still alive. The other two passed on, and then these snow snowflake, I believe they're pronounced clowns, were in here before. So I just moved that one over. Um, I've got a diamond goby somewhere and a uh, yellow watchman goby. The watchman usually comes out of this little cave right here. The diamond, you don't see them too much. Um, and then there are, there's a six line wrasse, both in both tanks actually. I didn't see the six line though, now that I'm just talk, talk, oh, I'm looking over there, I can see the six line, I think. Anyway, there's a six line in here and a melanaris. I lost, I had, there's a Melanaris coming out. I had a really sweet, it had gotten pretty big too, a yellow chorus wrasse that passed on. There's a six line. Found the yellow chorus um, underneath the uh, tank, dried up like a potato chip. So, um, here's uh, some green and red Montes that I have. This is in this tank, this uh, frog spawn right here is probably my, my most prized coral. I just really like the way it looks and it's grown real well. And I've got some uh, different frog spawn here, a couple hammers, a torch, which I'm gonna move to the other tank, just because as these corals grow, the torches usually don't live well with other euphelia. So I'll put that over by the other torches in the other tank and then get some more hammers and frog spawn over here. Um, one little zoa colony that's doing okay. So I tried to do more of an SPS island over here and things slowly started dying off, but there's still a few left. I don't even know what these purple ones are called, but they've been doing good, these branchy ones. Uh, the bird's nest has all but died off. Um, most of the other ones have two. There's some mushrooms down there that had, they were over here before and they they walked over. And then I don't know what this yellowish, orangish encrusting coral is called, but it's really grown. There's another mushroom in there and some, some acans that just haven't done real well for me. Um, a kind of a fluorescent green trumpet coral or candy cane, whatever you call it. And then some that were off of that colony in my other tank that just never did well in here for whatever reason. But anyway, that's that tank. I will give you kind of a long shot view. And then we'll go ahead and take the filter off and we'll go into my office and show you the last few tanks. All right. Here is the African cichlid tank, doing real well. Um, really, really, really dig the Universal Rocks background. Um, just have a variety of different Mabuna, all Mabuna in this tank. I'm not gonna go through and name what they all are and everything, half of them I can't even remember. Um, huh. The, uh, the timer isn't working correctly, but um, I have one of these uh, Shrimp King or Dennerly 10 gallon tanks with some Pintos that I actually produced myself. I still have the 90 gallon planted, the CO2 is out. I haven't taken good care of it, honestly, and uh, I'm taking it down, or I'm taking what's in it out, and I've got some plans for something that I haven't kept for quite a while. I don't wanna say it yet, um, but I'll show you in another video potentially coming up if I go through with it. But kind of going back to something I used to keep quite a bit a while back. And then just got a blue bolt tank down there. They're all hiding in the massive um, moss and stuff down there. So, but anyway, we're, <laughs> we're over a half hour here, so.
mostly you probably have long went away, but I'll wrap this up here. Um, so anyway, thanks, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I know it's been several months since I put a video out. Like I was saying at the beginning, I don't know what the future will hold for this channel. If I'm going to do videos as regularly, who knows? I might start again. I might just decide, you know, this is fun and do it, but I have a feeling you're not going to see as many videos as I once was producing, which is fine, but I'm still in the hobby. Um, just not as hardcore into it probably as I once was. It's been a rough year, man. I mean, watching a parent go through dementia and then eventually passing away on top of COVID-19, on top of a bunch of other stuff that I didn't even get into, you know, other friends and stuff like that of mine have fallen on hard times and had sicknesses and this and that. And it's, it's just been a rough year. Um, but I am thankful for a lot of things and I'm thankful for you guys that do watch this channel. I'm thank you for I'm thankful for the customers that purchase supplies through Aquatic Support Systems. Um, it's 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 great. I, I I can't thank you guys enough, and I thank you for the 15,000 plus subscribers to this channel. Um, you know, it's couldn't ask for anything more. It's it's not a big channel, but it's not a small channel. It's just something fun that I like to do and hopefully a few of you out there like to watch my videos and uh, you know leave a comment let me know what you've been up to um, let me know what you think of the fish room um, ask me any questions um, you know I'd like to interact with you guys again a little bit it's been a, it's been a long time I haven't been watching a lot of videos I haven't been commenting I haven't been seeing your comments on my videos you know um, let's talk uh, until next time thanks for watching guys later